How's it going this evening, y'all? It's your boy Eddie B here. Man, just wanted to stop by and uh, say uh, thank you guys for always supporting the channel, being down with me, and uh, just keeping everything going, man. I love and appreciate y'all for that. And um, it's 4th of July. Hope everyone's having a good one tonight. Be safe. Have your fun. Do whatever it is you got to do, man. Be with your friends, family, loved ones, whoever. Don't matter, man. Just be safe. Have a wonderful time. Another year in this crazy country, and uh, hopefully it's going to get better. Who knows? But, uh, hey gotta be uh some kind of hopeful right so uh yeah like i said man happy fun happy fourth and enjoy the video today y'all what's going on everybody today hope everybody's well having a good time so let's have a good time shall we Welcome back to Eddie B TV. I am, of course, Eddie B. Nice to see you. And we are back at you again today for another reaction video. And uh, today we're going to get into another one from the late, the great George Carlin, y'all. It's been a little while since I've got to some George, you know. Um, I don't I don't think there's any particular reason why I haven't gotten to any George, you know. It's just I've seen a lot of it. But uh, I decided to go a different angle today and get into some stuff I remember that I haven't gotten to before. So yes, we're going to get into that today. <clears throat> so we're going to get into one from old school George Carlin, man. Like I'm talking about before HBO specials were a thing. And this is from an old comedy album, not even a, a special on video or nothing like that. Because that's the thing with me, man. Most, um, Pretty much all of my George Carlin knowledge comes from uh, video appearances and specials and stuff like that. Not any comedy albums, really. I've heard some things from his albums, but nothing you no, know, too much to the point where I'm too familiar with it. So yeah, we're going to get into another one from George today. And this one's going to be titled Drugs. Okay. Well, um, I know George uh, was a drug user at some points in his life. I don't know to what extent, other than what I've heard him say personally, but he's like, you know, he drank a lot, and then he was always on cocaine and stuff, but, I mean, who knows, man, it's just like, I don't know exactly what all of the old school George Carlin has, but um, I figured, you know, why not get to one, you know, because I, I kind of avoided it a little bit, just because I like to just keep tabs on what I'm familiar with, and sometimes I don't like to branch out too much, but I decided, hey, we're going to get into this one today, no no ifs, ands, or buts about it, so yes, we're going to get into one from uh, George, and like, you know what, I think, I don't know if this was an outright suggestion to me, but I saw this one, and it might have been, so at the very least, I'm going to definitely shout out for 28 Chase, because you always have a bunch of uh, George Carlin suggestions and all the comments that you leave on my videos, and um I figured, you know what, you're definitely the the, num the number one guy to shout out when it comes to uh, old school George Carlin, just George Carlin in general. So um, I'm sure that you've uh, put this one on your list for me to get to, and I'm glad to finally get to it now. So let's go ahead and do it. George Carlin with uh, drugs. And if you like this reaction, please put on the like button for me one time. Subscribe to the channel, ring that bell, and uh, leave a nice comment for you, boy. Constructive critiques, leave a nice suggestion or request, and uh, throw a couple jabs, jokes, and singers at me. Friendly dialogue, no drama here, all right? You guys know the deal. So, uh, yeah, man, ready to get to some more George, man. It has been a while, but uh, we're finally going to make this happen, man. And uh, glad to finally get into some stuff from old school George Carlin. I've never heard this bit from him before ever, so it's actually good to know that uh, George is my favorite all-time comedian, and, and he's my favorite all-time comedian, and yet there's still stuff from him to get to that I've never heard before. So let's go ahead and do it. George Carlin with drugs right here on ADB TV. Comedy greats are back in the building, y'all. Let's have some fun. All right, here we go. Um, ta -da! I was on a talk show recently, and the uh, host asked me, said, what do you think about the dope problem? And I said, definitely, I feel we have too many dopes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, that's true. No question about it. Uh, that's why we have a drug problem, I really feel, you know, because, like, everybody has access to drugs, and we're all kind of just dopey, you know, we're just human beings, little protoplasm walking around, shaking hands, how are you, Phil, give me a piece of lettuce, you know. <laughs> no real big thing, we're just kind of dopey folks, and we have all these drugs available to us. You know, that's why there's a drug problem, man. There's all those drug stores, right? Hmm. Every three or four blocks, and there's a big sign. Drugs. Oh. Open all night. Drugs. Oh. We deliver. Drugs. Drugs. Cut rates. Drugs. It's the biggest thing on their sign. Cosmetics, sundries. Drugs. 
And the pharmacist is always stoned. You ever notice that? <laughs> it seems like it, don't Check it? Check his eyes. He's experimenting with something. Right now. <laughs> How come he can never fill a prescription right away, you know? Really, he always gives you that, better come back in about an hour. Man. I can't even read the bastard, you know? Exactly. What other explanation could there be? It's no accident that we're drug-oriented, really. Uh, the drug companies got us that way, and they'd like to keep us that way. I mean, that's a simple mm -hmm. thing. They start you early with the oral habit. A little orange-flavored aspirin for children. Uh. Two in the mouth, son. <laughs> Something wrong with your head? Two in the mouth. Remember that? Head, mouth. These are orange. There'll be other colors later on. <laughs> they even named it after a saint to throw you off, you know? <laughs> It's all right, son. Two in the mouth. St. Joseph. Uh, Remember so Papa Chucks? Papa Chuck! Papa Chuck. <laughs> well, you know, guy goes to a dance when he's 13. How's your head? Two in the mouth, man, you know. <laughs> Mom's got her fix. Coffee freaks running around. Alcohol. You know, that's the biggest, of course, and most abused. And incredible. 50% of all traffic deaths, no, yes, that's about 25,000, right. 50% of traffic deaths, 40% of all arrests, traceable, 50% of all first admissions to mental institutions, mm. traceable to alcohol. And then, of course, there's uh, diabetes, gout, high blood pressure, heart disease, insanity, divorce. So I always say, drink up, Shriners, whenever I see a couple of them. <laughs> Oh, uh, yeah. When they talk about drugs, they don't talk about all of them. That's the problem. They don't mm -hmm. mention coffee. <laughs> the low end of the speed spectrum, I grant you. But there are coffee freaks. And they're walking around. Nobody, you know, worried about it or anything. Mrs. Olson never tells you about that mild speed lift, you know. Because she, she's shooting freeze-dried Folgers, right? <laughs> yeah. Basically, damn. But you've seen the coffee freak in the office, haven't you? The guy who drops eight or nine cups every morning. Oh, damn. Always yes. in a good mood. Hi, how are you? Warm that up for you? Okay, yeah, hi, how are you? Hey, good to see you. Always in a nice mood, fine. Until the coffee urn breaks, man. And he's the first cat over. What do you mean broken, man? Why, plug it in, man. Turn it around, never mind. Man, put some water in. Holy shit, man. Turn the corner around, man. And then he goes out and scores, because he's the one who's hooked on it. I know, it's just a dopey example, but that's the beginning of it. Then you have housewives and the diet pills. Oof. Mom found out there's a lot more than dieting in those pills, man. Mm. Help you grind your teeth and feel great, too. <laughs> <laughs> Keep it on the phone a lot. Hi, how are you, Marge? Anyway, look at up. What's going on? Where are you going, Mom? Shopping at midnight? Well, they're open. You know, never mind. See you later, man. Go, go. Yeah. And yeah. athletes. Athletes got into uppers. College athletes. The right wing's last line of defense on campus. They're doing amphetamines. Remember when being up for the game used to be kind of a spiritual thing? <laughs> yeah, yeah, man. You up for the game? Been up all week, man. That's a little play on words right there. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's the end of it already? Damn. I could have listened to about another hour of that stuff. <laughs> yeah, man. You know what? I think it's just really cool how everything he just said in that clip you could still say the same exact way today. You know, it's a trippy, trippy thing how that works. All right, so that was a George Carlin with drugs. Mm -hmm. Well, man, I mean, I, drugs, man. I think what he said in there um, hit the nail really on the head when he said that the problem with drugs is that you don't talk about all of them. You know, there's so many things that you can get hooked on that you can actually refer to as a drug if it's not something chemically induced. You know what I mean? <laughs> I mean, I used to take Flintstone vitamins when I was a kid, you know what I mean? And um, if you get sick, you know, you you know, take a drink of the NyQuil or the Robitussin or something. Those are drugs, you know what I mean? Um, if you uh, get hurt or something like that, you spray the little stuff on you. I guess you can call that stuff like the little, um, like the peroxide. Is peroxide considered a drug or is it just an antiseptic wash or something like that, you know? But then again, that can be considered a drug too. I mean, I was always a kid before I hit puberty and all these things kept flooding over me. I used to kept thinking to myself, I would never ever take drugs. I'd never drink. I'd never do any of those things. 
until some stuff was going down that I didn't realize, oh, that's why things like this exist because their remedies may not always be the best ones, but they do exist, man. I'm telling you, like, I think um, the first thing that I ever did was uh, smoke a cigarette. And this was like when I was probably like really young and I just saw them because um, my mother and my stepdad, you know, they smoked. And um, I think my Uncle James, yeah, he smoked too. And uh, for the most part, I think that was pretty much it, unless it was another part of my family in the Midwest or whatever. But yeah, but like the cigarettes were the first thing that I really came into contact with. And then after that, it was the alcohol for the first time. And then I only did that because I was really just like, I was a insecure kid and I didn't want anyone saying, oh, he's afraid to take a drink and all this stuff. Yeah, so I caved to peer pressure a few times, okay? But I'm still not wearing no damn dare shirt. You understand me there. So, yeah. <laughs> but um, I think really the first thing um, that I could really say was a drug officially by the standard that people refer to as drugs that exclude others would be, you know, time I smoked weed for the first time. And c Dev CEO, is the one that hooked me up, man. Shout out to you, my man. And um, I remember I was going through some really twisted school stuff, man. I was losing my mind, and I, I just thought that things were just really looking down for me. And I was ready just to snap, you know, without even thinking a lot of the time. And he was around me and said, dude, you know, just, you know, smoke a little something, you know? I'm like, dude, I don't do that, man. He was like, nah, man. It was, it was pretty much right out of Friday, really. And I was like, dude, I don't do that stuff, man. It's like, and he didn't say, you know, stimulate your mind. It's Friday. He didn't say nothing like that, but just like, hey, try it. If you don't like it, then fine, never do it again. And so sure enough, I tried it for the first time. And I, I don't know if I said this before on the channel, man, but I'll tell you exactly what I did. About a good 15, 20 minutes went by after I took a couple hits. And then all of a sudden, I'm just sitting there just kind of like, oh, man. And then he just kind of like nudged me. He's like, hey, you, you all right, man? And I was just like, yeah, I'm cool, man. He's like, you ain't sweating none of that school stuff, none of that other drama going on. You ain't worried about it right now. I'm just like, huh, man, that was years ago, man. What are you talking about? <laughs> That's really how I was acting. It was kind of funny, man. And uh, I remember that very same night I burnt Top Ramen. And I don't know if I, I probably mentioned that before. I just had to rehash that one. But I really did burn Top Ramen. How the hell could you possibly do that? I did it. But, um, yeah, man, it, it's, you know, so many things are drugs. You know, like, you can consider it a drug if you get addicted to hoarding. You know what I mean? You could call it a drug if you're, um, some people like huff paint. You know what I mean? Some do that. Or some other people like, um like um smoke rock you know and they snort you know coke or they shoot up heroin and drinking obviously cigarettes and coffee like he said because coffee is like one of those drugs that he's like it's like on the bottom and it's legal and like alcohol is legal too and yet those things are if you get addicted to them very very bad for you <laughs> in more ways than you can count but it's like there's, there's a lot of hypocrisy that when it comes to uh, talking and dealing with drugs, man. So that's why it became something that I wasn't so, you know, discouraged by as I got older. I was just kind of thinking to myself like, all right, everybody picks their poison. You just got to find out which one works for you or find out if any of them work for you at all. But you only find out by going through it. I'm sorry. Some people will be like, oh, I've never. Well, then you have no depth to you as a person, you know. It's not about what you do or what you don't do. It's about what at least you could say for yourself definitively. You know what I mean? And that's pretty much where I had to find things out. Like, I'm not a ginormous heavy drinker or nothing like that, but I could have ended up being that. I, I got very close to becoming addicted to alcohol. But, you know, I just more of a social drinker sometimes i'll you know get something around the house i'll obviously i obviously drink with my my man c dab ceo i'll drink with my boy bobby b rob you know it's just like it's just i have these um ways of actually keeping things you know normal steady without going too far over the top sometimes once in a blue moon you'll go over the top but then you'll just have a story to tell when it comes to that but um yeah i mean i think that you need to have the right people around you when it comes to dealing with that. And I think there's obviously different uh, drugs for different crowds. You know, there's a lot of things that can go down. But uh, I just say that whatever it is that you do, just make sure if it's good, fine. You know, just find yourself your help, uh, your healthy balance. And if it's bad, only take yourself out and people who are just like you. You know, that might sound messed up, but, you know, which way are you going to go? 
But uh, yeah, man, the way that George was talking about this, man, you could pretty much have, like I said, the same conversations today. And a lot of people would still have the same questions and the same lack of answers. <laughs> but, you know, we figured out a lot of things since this bit probably came out. This was probably like, what, in the 60s or 70s, maybe? And it's just, you know, sometimes you just really have to find things out for yourself as opposed to just living by, you know, everyone's society proclaimed code of conduct or moral standards or whatever. But, uh, yeah, man, I like how we uh, talked about this one, man. And um, so so much still that you could apply to today. It's like the way he was saying this, it was so long ago, but yet. If you go out into the world and you look around and you hang out with different people, people that are your friends or your family, you know, you'll see that we're pretty much still dealing with the same stuff, you know, rehashing the same stuff in, 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 in politics about it, still um, kids getting in trouble for certain things and some kids not getting in trouble for certain things that they probably should be getting in trouble for. It's just like everybody's still all over the place with it. So we really haven't solved anything, but the only thing that remains a constant is what? Drugs exist, and people use them. <laughs> That's pretty much all you can say. But uh, another great bit from George, man. You know, I'm I'm going to, um, I think, for, for the most part, the next several George Carlin clips that I want to get to are ones from in just album times, you know, before uh, specials came out on video. Because uh, there's obviously a lot of stuff that I would like to hear from him uh, about issues back in the day that I probably didn't even know he talked about. Because like I said before, man, I'm only into the specials and I haven't really do um, dove into the old school stuff as far as like the comedy albums and, you know, um, before or even like the beginning stages of him, like, you know, rocking the, you know, the long hair and the big beard and all that stuff. So there's a lot of George that I still have to get to, even though he's my favorite comedian of all time. So uh, this one was good and I'm going to go ahead and uh, cut it off right there one more time. Uh, George Carlin with uh, Drugs. And if you like that reaction, please put on the like button for me one more time. Subscribe to the channel, ring that bell, and of course, as always, leave a nice comment for your boy. Constructive critiques, leave a nice suggestion or request, and I'll throw a couple jabs, jokes, and singers at me. Friendly dialogue, no drama here, all right? Please and thank you for always remembering. So yeah, it's going to be Eddie B TV wrapping this one up one more again here. Uh, George Carlin, uh, back. <laughs> I, I, it's so strange, you know, all the time was going by, I mean, like, I, like within the last few days, I just told myself, I have not done any George Carlin in a while, man. Am I slipping? <laughs> you know, but I definitely got to get to more George. Definitely got to get to more some more greats too, like Red Fox, uh, some more Richard Pryor, and uh, so maybe some more Richard Jenny, some Titus bits, maybe even get into a few. For, ooh, you know who I have not done? I don't think I've done a reaction. I think I got to do a, ooh, Robin Harris, man, and some more Bernie Mac as always. So much more stuff to get to. You already know the deal. But I definitely uh, plan on getting to that, and I uh, definitely plan on having some more, you know, good times and laughs with you guys. So, yeah, like I said, thank y'all for tuning in, and until next reaction, love and appreciate y'all. Peace.